right, hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about making sounds in MATLAB. So if I go to um, the, the MATLAB help here, I help, uh, type in help sound. There is a, um, a, a function within MATLAB that allows you to play sounds. Like I can do this right here. Um, I can say load handle and then sound like this, where the uh, sampling frequency and the signal Y from the handle sound file will appear and be played into the sound function. So you can play music within MATLAB. Well, we can also use it for a sort of other applications related to the Arduino board um, that I'll show you right now. So it turns out that um, there are people who communicate using sound, uh, using radios. And one of those ways of communicating the sound involves a really old method called Morse code. It's still used today. The, the recording right there is from October of 2020 uh, using my amateur radio. And, uh, and so people do use this all the time. Now, how can we use this relatively digital form of music or sound and, and work with it in MATLAB as an example for other communication schemes? Well, the, the trick is to use um, Morse code. But before we get into that, we want to show how um, the sound looks like, what sort of signals are valid to be used in an application like MATLAB. So I'm going to show you how to use sinusoids, so oscillating sort of patterns in MATLAB. Um, before I do that, getting back to the Morse code, I did want to point out that the signals that are being generated as a Morse code signal involve sinusoids, so the up and down oscillating movement of an electrical signal. And so the letter S is commonly referred to as dit 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 or three small dashes of or small um, bursts of sound. So a, a dit there, a dit there, and a dit there. And they're separated by off and then on, and then off and then on, and then off and on, like that. Now, the way it looks like from a, an audio perspective, a signal perspective, is that first there's no sound, then there's this oscillating up and down movement that's a sinusoid, then it turns off again, then it turns on, then it turns off, then it turns on again. One letter is is that span of values. And um, and so we can we can do those sinusoids within MATLAB. You can see an example of a program right here. I've called it sinusoid sounds uh, sample example, and it's in the lab documentation. Each burst of sound has a duration of 0.1 seconds. I use a sample frequency. That means there's a piece of data um, at every one forty thousandth of a second uh, in the signal. I'm going to plot the figure and I'm going to actually plot five different figures using a function called subplot. I'm going to run a for loop that will go through each of these subplots and plot one after the other. It will calculate the signal as an equation for y and then we'll plot it and you'll, you'll be able to see it. So let's let's run that. There's our first sinusoid, our second one at 400 hertz, our third one at 600 hertz, it's a higher pitch, our next one at 800, so a higher pitch again, and you can see the change in the waveform, and then a thousand hertz. All right, now on in MATLAB, we're going to use these sinusoids. In your Arduino or Grove board, we're going to send a signal as digital pulses to the buzzer that you find on your uh, on your board. And the signal is similar to sinusoid except it's just on or off signals. And it'll look like this. We're going to generate a square wave and you'll be able to see it. It's basically the same thing as a sinusoid except what we do is we round the, the value to be either 1 or 0. So it's not values in between, it's either 0 or 1. And here's an example of that. So again, 200 hertz, 
400 hertz, 600 hertz, 800 hertz, and then finally 1000 hertz. So you can see the sound is different. It has to do with how we're driving the speaker uh, that's different as a square wave than it would be as a sinusoid. Um, but in both cases, we can get sound out and the, the pitch can be controlled by changing the, um, the, the frequency, how fast it's changing or how slowly it's changing. And, um, and so that's, that's how we get different sounds out of our, out of our program. Now, we can make more complex sounds as well, and we can do that uh, using loops and arrays. And we've been talking about lists of numbers, and, and here's a program that I'm going to show you that shows how, how to set, bring all those sort of concepts we've been talking about in class together. The first thing I wanted to point out is something that's really helpful at the beginning of a, a script or a function in MATLAB, and that is to run the clear all, semicolon, close all. You can also write it like that. I like to write it on one line. And what this does is it clears all my variables and it closes all my figures. And, uh, and, and this allows you to uh, get rid of problems that there would otherwise be with conflicts in your workspace. The workspace is over here. So it gets rid of any variables that were in there before so that there's no overlap and potentially mistakes that are generated because of old data. Next, I'm going to generate an array of Morse characters. Now, where does this array of Morse characters come from? Well, it comes from the standard for Morse code. And you can see that there are different um, combinations of short pulses or short bursts of sound and long bursts of sound um, that make different, um, that represent different letters. So the letter A is a short burst of sound followed by a short bit of nothing and then a longer burst of sound. So a dit and a da. A B, on the other hand, would be a long burst of sound, followed by nothing, followed by a short burst of sound, followed by nothing, followed by a short burst of sound, etc. Okay? And so you can see that this is how you represent different letters uh, and numbers as well in Morse code. So what we're going to do is we're going to do S O S O S O. The way we're going to represent it is in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 rows of an array. Each row will represent one character or something like a character. The first one is going to be the character S in Morse code. Then we're going to have a small gap. So that row number 2 is going to represent the, the gap between the letter S and the letter O, which will be three silent periods of sound. Okay. Then it's going to be the letter O, which is a long period of sound, followed by, <coughs> excuse me, a short period of nothing, <coughs> excuse me, followed by a long period of sound, sh followed by a short period of nothing, followed by a long period of sound. Then a longer gap, then S, then a short gap, sorry, then a, then a, an interword gap, okay, which is going to be longer, okay, so if these intercharacter gaps are three characters, uh, in, or three spaces of, of, of silence. This one is six, then an O, and the O will be da, dash, dash, and dash with little spaces in between the dashes. Then an intra character gap, which is three of uh, silence, then an S, then six silence, then an O. All right, how do we represent it? I'm going to do a 14 column wide array. For my S, I do on, off, on, off, on. So this will be dit, silent, dit, silent, dit. Then I fill in the rest of the, the elements in my 14 column uh, row with not a number, which basically means there's nothing in here. It's, um, it's a special character that says, well, it's not a number, it's not a letter, it's nothing, but it's going to take up some space that MATLAB will understand. Then I have three silence for uh, the space between an S and the O. Then I have an O, which is th it's a dash. Okay, so it's three uh, on signals smushed together. Then a brief silent. Then three on smushed together for a dash. Then a brief silence. 
then three smushed together for another dash. And then I fill in uh, row or sorry, column 11, 12, and 13 with not a number. Then I have the space. Okay. Then I do another S. Then I do an intra word space. So that's six bursts of silence. Okay. Then I do O, a small space between the letter O and the letter S, then S, then a small bit of space between the letter S and the letter O. That's how I set it up. Next, I calculate what my um, sinusoid should be for one of these dits, one of these short periods of sound, okay? I calculate that. I then recall, I rename it. I call it beep. And then I say that I can also have a silent period of sound. So no sound for the same duration as a beep, as a, as a dit, as a, as one of the little, um, periods inside of the S. Okay. After that, I take a look at my array and I find out how many letters I've got, which is basically how many characters I've got, which is going to be 11. Then the width of my array, which is 14 columns. And then I have basically a running complete signal that I'm calling total sound. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to concatenate or add on each little bit of sound one after the other that is based on this pattern right here. Okay. And then in order for this to work, I have a for loop. Whoops. Oh, I just made my for loop disappear right there. Okay. I have a for loop right here and the for loop will go um, one row at a time all the way through. I'll start with column number one. Every time I get to a new row, I start with column number one and then I run through uh, all of the elements in that row from the first column to the last column, the 14th column. And I say, if a particular element is equal to one, then I want my total sound to be equal to the previous. So it's a vector, the previous value of total sound, adding on one beep, one duration, little burst of sound. If on the other hand, I find in my array that there's a zero, what I'm going to say is I want my new sound total sound right here to be the same vector as before. And I want to tack on a little bit of silence. And then if it's anything other than one or zero, basically, if it's one of the NANs or not a number, then don't do anything. Don't modify total sound. Then increment my array and then go back up to the top of the while loop and keep going. And what this will do is it will basically go through this array starting here. I'll start with this element right here, then that one, then that one, then that one, then that one. It'll add on sound and silence to total sound. Then it'll go through all these knotted numbers, not adding anything at all. Then it will go to the second row. You'll see silence, silence, silence. It'll add on to total sound. Then not a number, not a number, not a number, not a number, etc. Then the third row. So then a little bit of sound, a little bit of sound, a little bit of sound, a little bit of silence, a little bit of sound, a little bit of sound, a little bit of sound, a little bit of silence, a little bit of sound, a little bit of sound, a little bit of sound, nothing, 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 and so on and so forth until it gets to the very end down here. Then we're going to plot it and then we're going to play the sound. So without any further ado, let's run this. And so that's the signal. That's the signal that we've got right now. Um, what I'd like to do is zoom in like this to see what this actually looks like. So I'm going to zoom in like this. So we can actually see the sinusoid. Oh, 
we can see it. So we've now zoomed in to one of the sound bursts inside of the signal and you can see that it is indeed a sinusoid and then it's followed by some silence just like that. And there you have it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to work with the board. Mm -hmm.